Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Etanios here. Just before this video starts, I want to give you the opportunity to win a giveaway here on my channel. I'm going to be giving away one $50 Xbox gift card and one $50 PlayStation card. If you guys want to win these cards, you have to go down below, subscribe to my channel, and also comment, I subscribed and want either the Xbox card or the PlayStation card. You will better your chances of winning these gift cards if you are A, active on my channel, B, liking my videos, and C, commenting and just staying active on all of my content. I will be giving these gift cards away once my channel hits 1,000 subscribers. We are currently sitting around 250, so the gift giveaway is a little far into the future, but I know you guys can hit it. Let's jump into the video. In today's episode of this brand new Draft to Glory franchise mode with the Oklahoma City Spartans, we are going to be jumping into the first draft, moving into the entire first season, and kind of ending it off right at the end of that first season. Um, that's all coming up in this video. Cue the intro. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanios here. Welcome to episode 1 of our NHL 20 Draft to Glory franchise mode with the Oklahoma City Spartans. Today guys, we are going to be jumping in to this brand new franchise mode. I have already created the team there. You guys should have seen the logo if you watched my uh, channel update kind of video there. And uh, yeah, uh, we're going to jump in. Just going to be going through all the basic settings here quickly. You guys have uh, left some feedback on what to do here, and I'm really happy with uh, all the feedback I've been getting. I think that's awesome. Uh, but anyways, we're playing as Oklahoma. Um, our owner's patience is huge. Importance of success is kind of there, and the spending doesn't really matter that, that much. As you can see, our AHL team there in the bottom corner is the Fort Wayne Warriors. Uh, literally like the exact same logo almost and we are playing at the Chesapeake Energy Arena If you guys are wondering what arena that is that is where the Oklahoma City Thunder play currently and um, Yeah, uh, we don't actually I mean I'll hit customize AHL team just to show you guys the Fort Wayne Warriors here I've gone through and pretty much made all the jerseys and everything already so uh I do believe I just named, yeah, it's Fort Wayne Ice Hockey Facility because I couldn't find a legit arena. Uh, but there are our three logos for the Fort Wayne Warriors. Um, as far as the team uniforms go, they are looking very good. This is almost exactly the same as how our um, NHL jerseys are going to look with the Spartans. But again, like, they're looking really good. They're, uh, all the colors are set. And... Um, yeah, this should be a fun uh, kind of sim and franchise mode. It's going to be a lot of sim, to be honest, uh, since it is the, uh, what do you call it? Since it is a draft to glory, it's going to take a lot of seasons to really become good. But yeah, this is the, uh, I mean, I named it the Fort Wayne Ice Hockey Facility. Um, you guys can get mad at me if you want for just not being creative with the name, but we're honestly not going to be paying that much attention to the AHL team for probably the first three to four episodes. Might even be longer than that since we are only drafting around seven players every single draft. So anyways, the Warriors and the Spartans are all set up. It actually drops us right into the perfect slot here in between uh, Nashville and St. Louis in alphabetical order of the Central Division. So that's perfect. But guys, before we actually start here, I do have some rules that I have written out for this franchise mode. So we will go over those in a second. I am going to turn GM firing off just because we are going to have some absolutely terrible seasons. And I do not want to get kicked off of this team before we can go anywhere with it. Fog of War is going to be off because that just doesn't make sense for a YouTube series. I am going to leave the head coach editing lines on because honestly, it's not going to matter for the first three or four seasons. So into the rules and settings nice and quickly accessibility we don't have to worry about i do prefer to play five minute periods but that's not going to affect us till way later in this series uh you guys were kind of giving me a hard time for playing trade difficult 
trade difficulty on easy, we're honestly not going to be making that many, if any, trades in this franchise mode since it's a draft to glory. So I'm going to drop it on hard just in case we do try to make a trade, but uh, yeah, just make it way more difficult on myself there. You guys said that's way more realistic, so I'm glad you gave me feedback on that. Um, I think we're going to put sim engine scoring on high just because that's honestly more accurate like usually there's like between one and four players who score 100 points the last two years or last year in the nhl there was like six or seven guys that scored 100 points so we're gonna put that on high that's the only other setting i'm i think i'm gonna change here and that would be on advanced settings so yeah that's all the changes i'm gonna make if you guys want me to go in and change those later on if you have your opinions on those drop them in the comments below and let's start this uh, franchise mode just before we actually start this expansion draft or the draft class or anything like that, I do need to go over the four rules I have set in place for this draft to glory. Um, I think I'm going to list them down below at the beginning of every video, just so you guys can go down and make sure that we are sticking to those rules. And if I do break those rules, you guys hit me in the comments. Like, honestly, like, I shouldn't be breaking these rules at all. They're not that difficult to follow, but uh, it is going to result in our team playing quite poorly. So, rule one is that we are only allowed to acquire players through the draft. It is a draft to glory. There's no reason to pick up free agents or do anything like that. We might bend the rules a little bit as this franchise mode goes on with, um, with unsigned or undrafted players that we might be allowed to pick those guys up in free agency, but right now, no free agents at all uh, and no trades. Uh, the second rule is that we must draft low-end expansion players. Maybe not the worst players, but like very close to the worst players. They're going to be like, nobody's going to be above an 80 rated most likely out of this expansion draft here. So we're picking up short-term players that are only going to be on our team for a year or two. And then we are relying solely on our prospects to grow and become better. Uh, the third rule is that we are not allowed to acquire free agent or players through free agency unless they were drafted by us so again if one of our players for whatever reason doesn't want to sign with us in the offseason hits free agency we are allowed to go after those players that we drafted any other players right now not allowed to pursue in free agency and the only way this is rule four the only way that we are allowed to acquire picks is with rfa sheet offers so if one of our players hits rfa and they uh they end up actually hitting the market there and get a uh, sheet offered by another team that is the only way we are allowed to acquire picks so those are the rules uh, we are going to take a quick look at the draft class here just before we start and uh, looks like a defenseman to start here left-handed Tate Harvey uh, I believe he's gonna be NHL ready we got five elites here off the start uh, four of them are NHL ready here so that looks pretty decent uh, we should have a top five pick, but you never know. We've gotten screwed before in the draft. So, yeah, um, that's the draft class we're looking at. Um, besides that, my Xbox ever loads here. Um, the other thing I do want to take a quick look at is our coaching staff, just to make sure that we actually draft players uh, that fit our system. So... Uh, we got a generalist. His name is Roger Wharton. Okay. <sighs> All right, guys. So, uh, Roger Wharton is a, uh, generalist, uh, coach here. His style is actually physical, but, um, he's got an A minus overall. Overall, he's a really good coach. He's got A plus offense, um, A minus defense, an A power play, A penalty kill, and A teaching. The teaching is going to be huge. Uh, as far as coach influence goes, he's not so good. He's only got a C there. But, um, yeah, no stats on him so far. And then looking at our, oh, wow. Okay, we got a very, uh, we got quite the overload system here. And I, I very much like the defensive system where it's all balanced. So we can literally draft any defenseman. But um, as far as the forwards go, it's going to be a lot of overload, high-skilled players that we're going to be trying to draft. That third line is going to be mainly um, kind of like grinders and stuff like that. But uh, 
definitely an interesting setup there with his um, line strategies. Okay, so um, definitely an interesting coach we have uh, in that that kind of system and setup there as a generalist. He's playing a lot of balanced systems, but I did find the uh, first line a little weird with the carry and cycle bias. That's that's weird. It's usually carry and shoot rather than carry and cycle. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, so we're not even landing an elite. I can't stand that. That's so brutal. Edmondson moves from eight to three. Chicago moves from thirteen to two. Okay, that was expected. But like, come on, you couldn't even give us a top five pick. And we're the third worst ranking team in the NHL. The draft lottery is going to screw us so much in this. I'm calling that right now. But uh, yeah, we moved down to the sixth overall pick, guys. Oh, oh, that hurts. Just really is not good, especially when there's that many elites in the draft. I'd even take a one year a guy like a guy that's uh, not going to be ready for a year, supposedly. But like, wow. That's brutal. Dang it. Oh, that guy would fit so... Osgood would be perfect for our system, too. What about this guy? Takashi. He's not going to fit any of our systems. Like, fuck. We might go with this guy instead. Eminger, just because he fits our system better. It's awful. So guys, we're going to begin this expansion draft again following rule number two, I guess, was that we are not picking very good uh, players through this expansion draft. So I will be back with you guys once I'm done picking players. Again, these are all going to be short term, not very good players, and let's see how it goes. Alright guys, so I am done the draft here um, as far as the expansion draft goes. Again, a lot of these guys you probably won't even recognize. Uh, Johan Larson's one of our better players out of this draft. Cuckoo's alright, Beltmar's alright. Um, yeah, so you can see like a lot of 75 to 78 rated players. Um, some below, some higher than that. We got Marion Gabrick there. Uh, we also took Louis Erickson off of the Canucks hands. He's one of our better players. And, uh, yeah, saving a couple teams from cap dilemmas and problems, but uh, not really, if we're being honest. Like, we took on such little cap space that our team's going to be quite bad. So, uh, I don't even want to, like, do draft interviews here because, like, again, we're not going to be getting any of these, like, good players. Um, I'm honestly thinking Emergen or Eminger, sorry, over Kashi. Because again, 5'9 versus 6 foot, and just kind of different players altogether. Sniper versus it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, by the looks of it, Eminger fits our team better. That's just what it looks like. Um, they want us to trade away all our seconds. I don't even want to. I mean, I don't want to. We're not allowed to. So anyways, guys, uh, jumping into the draft here. Uh, New Jersey landed the first pick. Colorado moves down. Um, who actually had the third pick in the draft this year? Wasn't it? Um, oh, what? Yeah, the Rangers didn't move. The Rangers stayed at nine. Edmonton moved up, so that's annoying. Anyways, let's see what these prospects are looking like. 79 rated offensive defenseman, plus they get Jack Hughes because it's like a repeat draft. That's freaking solid. 79 rated Osgood. Um, Edmonton's going to land a defenseman. Oh no, they take Crawford here. Um, was Crawford the third ranked player? No, he was not. He was the fourth. Okay, guys, so uh, if Colorado makes a really bad decision, or LA, we might end up with an elite. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Oh, we land an elite. Let's go. Okay, so uh, Takashi goes to LA. Uh, Wiz Mueller goes to... Okay, wait, so who do we get? We land Jekimovs? Wow, okay, that's really decent. That's an NHL-ready defenseman. Um, 
I thought we were screwed. So, Ruslan Jekimov's gonna be the first selection by this Oklahoma City Spartans franchise. I'm incredibly happy with that. 79 rated, too. Let's go. Three teams. Edmonton. Oh, Edmonton, Colorado, and LA all just absolutely mess up with their picks. And uh, leave Jekimov to the Spartans here. Number 22 defensive defenseman. He's got some pretty decent stats, if I'm going to be honest. Like, uh, three and a half stars, almost all pretty much across the board. Uh, actually, no, it's three and a halfs on the bottom, two and a halfs on the top. I'm happy with that, though, guys. So, uh, yeah, land a really decent defenseman off the start. We're going to sim all the way to our next pick and uh, go back and just check out the other picks that went after us. So, Eminger wouldn't have been terrible, but way better pick in Jekamov's. Um, let's see if anybody else turns out to be decent in this draft, or in this first round anyways. Um, medium starter, Granlund. That is a nice pick by Nashville, uh, especially since he's already 72 rated. And um, yeah, no other really good picks, just Nashville coming out as winners from that first round. I'd say we came out as winners from that first round too, to be honest. But um, I think we're going to go and select a goalie here, Maddox Ludwig. Um, he's got a two-year ETA, so I'm assuming he's going to be fairly decent. Because a lot of these other guys have got five years on them. I'm going to go with Ludwig here. Even though I doubt he's actually going to be a low elite, he's still going to be a decent rated tendy. So yeah, 72 rated low starter. That is, I'm impressed with that. Again, you got to look at those ETAs if you want to figure out the ratings, guys. So uh What's his name? Maddox Ludwig. Uh, he's only 5'11", but um, as far as the rating goes, very happy with that. Ooh, miss out on a low elite there in Elbowin. But um, anyways, going back through the rest of the second round. Wow, this draft is incredibly weak for the most part. Ooh, that's a nice pick. Billy Brown, he's 6'1", uh, butterfly tendy for the Red Wings there. And uh, the Capitals land an offensive defenseman there with their 56th overall pick, or 56, 58th, I think. Yeah, 58th overall pick, uh, and he's a top four, so that's pretty good as well. Um, and then uh, the Canadians land Abelin there with, I believe that's actually LA's pick. So yeah, um, good players going throughout here. I think we're gonna take Fallon here. Uh, is it Fallon or Fallon? I think it's Robinson Fallon, I believe, but uh, He's looking like he's going to be around a fourth line kind of player for us since uh, he's got the crash. Ooh, actually, we could take a risk on this guy. Um, Jalen Habshed, Habshed, not Habshed, Habshed. Weird names for sure, but uh, he's got a five-year ETA as well. He's got crash in that. Um, I get the feeling he's going to be like a low elite kind of player there. So honestly, I would be happy with that pick, but... This guy is a guaranteed grinder. Crash the net. He's got a cycle. Um, did they cycle? They do. Okay. Honestly, Robinson Fallon would not be a bad pick either, but I'm going to take the risk here, guys. See if it pays off or not. Jalen Habsheed. And he's a low elite. He's a power forward. Okay. So I think we did all right with that. He is only 49 rated. So that's not awesome. But... Um, I mean, for the potential, it is. We just need to actually grow these players now, which is going to be the biggest uh, challenge out of this entire franchise mode. Punyanovs would have been a good pick, too. Um, yeah. Wait, did we already draft a Punyanovs in the first round? Or what was... It was Ruslan Punyanovs, wasn't it? Or no, it was Jekamov, sorry. Okay. So, um, pretty decent third round, to be honest. A bunch of low elites drop in that round and uh yeah some teams have got to be pretty happy with their picks there for sure so moving on to round four now our 99th overall selection i think i might take moser but um again not entirely sure here on who i am wanting to select like there really aren't that many options around here Ackerman's a no. Um, Dodge could be another good pick. Uh, same with Varlamov, so I'm not sure on either of those guys. 
Okay, so I think for now we are just going to go with um, Moser here because he's the top rated prospect. Five year ETA, but uh, might turn out to be elite. I'm going to bet on top seven, but you never know. And he's a top six. Okay. So not awful compared to some of the other potentials in this draft, but pretty bad still. <laughs> um, considering how our other picks went, we did pretty good. Uh, Sherhoff would have been a way better pick there. Um, besides that, there was really nobody in that round. Wow, round five is a bit of a letdown. The Canadians take Lume there, or Loom, I don't know how you say it. And now, let's see, we could take Varlamov, or we could take Dodge. Wait, who's taller? Varlamov's bigger. I think we're going to take him. Even if he's only like a fringe starter, at least he's a big goalie. Uh, Jason Dodge might grow, but questions if he could handle a professional environment. Nothing to report on Varlamov, so we're going to take Valery Varlamov, and he doesn't pay off, but he is 57 rated, so not totally awful. Again, um, I think that's kind of what we're going to be going for for these first few seasons is not totally awful. And yeah, we made the right selection there as far as overall goes. That's 57 versus 47 on Dodge. Uh, yeah, no, pretty decent there, considering that we were, or I was seriously debating both of those guys. Um, besides that, round six, uh, there was literally nobody in round five there that was any good. Um, could take Kavanov. Uh, very well-rounded personality, that's what I like to see. Um, we have no behind-the-net strategies, and that's what Ranford fits. So I think I'm going to take Kavanov here. Uh, he's got a shoot and balanced, supposedly shoot and balanced. Um, Two-way defenseman, low top four. Uh, only 49 rated, but that's pretty pretty good pick still for a late round like that. Um, we might even be able to grow him into a medium top four, but I doubt that. Low top fours don't usually grow like that at all. So nobody else in that round. Man, these drafts are like just... There's like nobody in here. Um, well, we could take this guy, but he's a defensive defenseman. Um, is there anybody else that I saw in here? Oh, McGilney might actually be a nice pick. Cycle and pinch on a balanced uh, defense. He's actually ranked higher than a lot of the other players there um, in front of him. Bure, oh maybe. No, he's a crash in that. Uh, he'd be like a third liner at best. I don't think he's going to turn out. I think we're going to go with Andre McGilney here for our last pick, even though there was an elite. Uh, McGilney looks like he might turn out a little better, and he's a 7th D. Oh, okay. So, um, I mean, I can sim through the rest of these picks, but again, I don't think anybody's really going to turn out well. Okay, so out of all of our seven picks there, um, we landed two or three pretty decent ones. I would say, uh, who is really good here? Habshid was a nice low elite, uh, Ludwig was a decent, uh, low starter, and Jackamob's obviously gonna be the pick of the draft for us. Sixth overall, landing an NHL elite ready, or, uh, an elite NHL ready defenseman. I'm quite happy with that, so, um, yeah, we're gonna have a lot of players to re-sign here. So I might just not really talk and kind of just uh, speed up through it. You guys won't really hear anything from me. You'll just hear some background music or something. But uh, yeah. Okay, guys. So we don't sign all of our rookies there, but we sign the big ones. Um, the only thing I'm kind of worried about is that our players uh, don't grow properly. Uh, just because we're going to lose so many games. Uh, so yeah, literally everybody signs there. I'm gonna sim to free agency. It's not gonna matter because we're not gonna be involved in it at all. <laughs> so uh, they want us to edit the trade block. I'm actually gonna change our. Uh, yeah, just gonna change all the preferences there so we don't get as many drafts and we can or uh, offers and then we can just kind of sim through quicker. So, 
yeah, if we take a quick look at our team here, just before we actually skip ahead to the regular season, um, our goalies are two of our best players. Uh, but as far, yeah, Jackamobs is like our best defenseman right now. A little sad, but I mean, his skating is really good for a defensive defenseman, I have to say. All right, so for this upcoming season, uh, they want us to win our regular season home opener. Cannot guarantee that. Um, have at least 75% happiness on concession and be within a million dollars of our salary range. Looking at these lines, guys. Oh boy. <laughs> um, we're going to leave the head coach on. But is there really like no chemistry between these guys? Yikes. So yeah, um, oh the defense is pretty decent actually, I'm happy with that. So the defense should be just fine. Um, Jackamon's like, he fits everything alright, like it's all balanced so he can play up and down the lineup. Uh, he should be just fine where he is, but we're going to have to draft um, somebody with at least a bit of balanced, uh, balanced preferences there. And then besides that... In the AHL, definitely weak. Um, so, yeah. Uh, like, literally, guys like Habsheed there, Jalen Habsheed, that we just drafted, is going to be getting playing time on that bottom pair or bottom line. And then Tendies, like Ludwig's right there. He's almost a minor starter already, so that's not bad. But, um, yeah, definitely going to be rough. For our forwards this season. I don't know so much about the defense. Um, that one one star, whatever you call it there, might actually be good enough. I think we're going to actually go out and just right off the bat name... Um, okay, first off, Johan Larsson is like number 18. I'm pretty sure. Um, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure he's number 18. Um, and then we're going to give Jekamov, since he is our first ever draft selection we're gonna give him the number he prefers which was 22 and I think I'm gonna name him captain guys uh, just because who actually does yeah Belmar is kind of the guy who at least deserves a captaincy here I feel um, so yeah I am gonna name Jackamov's captain right off the bat it's gonna be a losing team for definitely a few seasons but um, yeah, we're going to pretty much just sim the entire first season after we look at the draft class. And by the looks of it, Lafreniere is going to be the number one prospect here. So we're going to have just a lot of regular elites throughout this draft. Um, we got a West. Okay, I'm just making sure we have all our scouts in order because I don't want to have players that I can't scout that are top prospects because... We're looking at all the top prospects. We're going to be contending for them. Um, so yeah, Anton Mundell, Cole Perfetti. The, these are all given names. These are all players that are normally going to be in this draft. Um, Lucas Raymond's way down at 9. Okay. Um, Tim Stutzel. I feel like that's a little high for him. But maybe not. Maybe he got a rating change in there. I feel like Vizhnevsky might actually turn out to be pretty decent. And I know Yaroslav Askarov's going to be a good goaltender, but that's just because I created him. Um, so yeah, I think I'm kind of just going to cut out here for you guys, and uh, I'll just kind of get the rest of the scouting on this group done. And then... Um, I guess I'll just see you guys at the end of the first season because I'm not really going to show a whole bunch of scouting reports or anything like that. And yeah. Okay, guys. So um, we are at the end of the regular season here. I actually just started the playoffs, but our Spartans did finish dead last in the league. Um, it was actually a little bit closer than you might have thought. There are a lot of teams with over 100 points this season, but um, the team that was closest to us was actually the New York Islanders. They only finished with four more points than us. The Blue Jackets only finished with five, so definitely some weak teams throughout here. 
we lost 48 regular games, uh, 9 in overtime, and we only won 25, so not, like, unexpected, but it's still pretty bad, so. Um, and then as far as the, um, Warriors go, I do believe they finished dead last as well. Yeah, Fort Wayne Warriors there, they had 11 wins, 63 losses, and 8 overtime losses. Um, as far as our player stats go, um, our top scorer, well, we had Sokolov here, Dmitry Sokolov, um, had the most points on our AHL team in the NHL. Mark Letestu had 58 in 82 games played. Um, if you guys are wondering about, what's his name? Um, you guys are wondering about Jack Jakimovs, he only played half the season in the NHL, uh, so I don't know why they sent him down for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, I don't think he's going to have a lot of growth, he had a pretty um, low-key first season here, like he put up more points in Fort Wayne than he did. Uh, yeah. Okay, so anyways, that's our uh, team, if we go and look at the entire NHL. Um, the top scorer was actually Brad Marchand with 113 points in 82 games. Pasternak scored 111 in just 74. So that leads me to believe he would have been the top scorer if um, he had stayed healthy. McKinnon hit a franchise potential with 110 points. Ransman right behind him with 105. Crosby, Ovechkin, McDavid are the other guys to score 100. Uh, Landeskog was right there too. So yeah, that's kind of the league um, as far as the rookie skaters go. Capo Caco looks like he's going to win himself uh, Rookie of the Year there with a 74-point season in his first year in the league. Um, as far as tendies go, Carter Hart actually had the most wins with 44 for Philadelphia. He did play almost 70 games. Vasilevsky, Matt Murray, Tuka Rask up there as well. And... Um, yeah, I'm just going to sim right through the playoffs, and I will cut to when the playoffs are over, I guess. Alright guys, so at the end of the season here, playoffs have ended, Pittsburgh wins the Stanley Cup again, uh, and the Bennington, Bennington Devils? I, I didn't read that properly. Um, the Devils win there, so stop, I don't want to see the draft lottery yet. Uh, we actually want to go just take a quick look. It's Bingham. I believe it's Bingham, but I'm not sure. Okay, so, yeah, for the playoffs here, um, there's all of your Arizona. Oh my gosh. Arizona makes it all the way to the freaking Stanley Cup Finals. Pittsburgh went through New Jersey, uh, Philly, and Boston to get to the Finals, and then, of course, Arizona at the end. Arizona went through San Jose, uh, Vancouver and Dallas to get to the finals. Um, yeah, the Binghamton Devils, Binghamton, that's what it is. The Binghamton Devils went through Belleville, then Rochester, then uh, Lehigh Valley, and then eventually beat Iowa in the finals. Iowa went through Colorado, um, Manitoba, and Grand Rapids to get to the finals. So yeah, crazy season there. Um, definitely did not expect the Arizona Coyotes to make it that far. But as far as the player awards go, um, Marchand obviously wins Art Ross. Pasternak wins the Hart. Um, James Norris goes to, wow, Larson. Uh, McKinnon wins the Lady Bing. Kako saw that one coming, wins the Calder. Getzel wins the Consmite. good for him. Uh, Crosby won it the last two times Pittsburgh was there. Bobrovsky wins the Vesna and the William M. Jennings uh, along with Montembeau, Montembeau, I don't know how you say uh, his last name there. Masterton goes to Yossi and the Jack Adams goes to New Jersey's coach. Uh, Selkie goes to uh, O'Reilly, Pasternak wins the Lindsay and Ovechkin wins another <laughs> rocket. Wow. Okay, so pretty amazing uh, season there lots of good players and oh, we get moved down to the Islanders win the lottery from the second spot the Rangers move up four spots 
to steal our player who looked like he was going to fit our system the best. Um, so that's too bad, but we're going to have to work with what we got. Um, so I think we might end up taking another defenseman here in uh, Topi Nylakainen. I think it's Nylakainen, but I'm not sure. Um, but like he doesn't fit our system that well. Well, actually, to be honest, Terrence Petrie doesn't really either. Like, Lafreniere probably would have been the best fit. Carrying cycle, yeah. Too bad. Um, so the Islanders are going to... The Islanders? Wow. Yeah, the Islanders are going to get um, Alexi Lafreniere here. Uh, none of these players actually fit our system properly. Cole Perfetti's probably the closest. Yeah, yikes. Um... Oh, we could take this guy because he does, he does fit our system with the overload, but he's three years away. And see, that's not what we're looking for. We're not looking to grow players. We're looking to get players now from the first round that are ready to play. So that's a little rough. Um, yeah, dang it. That's, that's not good. I would kind of, I was kind of hoping we won the lottery there, but we did not. Um, he was a 16th overall pick by San Jose, yikes. Okay, anyways, um, uh, we did have Nate Thompson retire there. I don't think anybody else did on our team, but we can go double check. Ah, uh, yeah, just Thompson there. And a whole bunch of scouts, or not scouts, coaches retiring. Uh, none of our coaches do yet. Chris Kunitz becomes a scout, and... You know what, we are going to go view the draft class and just see uh, if we can gain any more information on these prospects. A lot of them, no, we can't really. Like, they're, they're good. Um, and we don't need to find out much more information on them. Um, there are a couple guys in the later rounds here who I am quite interested in figuring out. Uh, this guy would be nice to pick up, but he's at 27. Yeah, that's not going to work. Um, Sean Merritt is looking like he's going to fit our team almost perfectly. Uh, Noel Gundler honestly wouldn't be that far off either, but I think Merritt's going to be the better pick there, three-year versus four-year. Yeah, so we're probably going to be taking Sean Merritt second round. Third round, this is where it starts to get a little more uh, questionable because we're not going to get Joel Weber. Um... We might get Erskins, but again, doesn't fit the system great. If there's any balanced uh, defenseman, that's what we want. Like, this guy would be awesome. Um, we're going to interview him just to figure out, okay, what do we need to know? Um, we're going to go to his skills. Chat about your strengths and weaknesses. Uh, let's chat about his strengths first. Greatest strengths. Uh, skating. Okay, so he's probably going to be an offensive defenseman. Let's talk about his play style. Play style. Not his readiness. We know he's not ready. Enjoying the rush, but still can be the first man back. So I think he's a two-way. I think he actually is. Um, and then personality. May as well. Personality, high standard, just want the team to win at all costs. Okay, so he looks like he'd be decent. I don't know if he's going to be an elite or not. Um, what's his name? Casper Putio? 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 He's 70 rated. Does that say he's 70 rated? Really? Hold up. Did that actually say his rating there? I could have sworn I just saw 70 on there. Um, okay, so he's looking like he might actually be a steal there. So he could be our third rounder. Um, I kind of want to interview this guy too. Erskins. I don't think he's going to be as good. Skills. What are your strengths? Um, so again, another two-way. Okay. What about your play style? Stay at home defenseman? No, so he's a good skating uh, defensive defenseman. And I mean, we can talk personality too. Let's see. 
see. Um, same thing as uh, Puccio or Puccio. Is it Puccio or Puccio? I don't know, but either way. It says he's 64. Oh no, wait, that's his ranking. Never mind. I'm, I'm not, not thinking. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, we definitely still want to look into. I think Puccio is going to be the best prospect there out of the 70 to 90 range. I would very much like to draft him. Um, and then there's a couple goalies in here that would be nice to pick up. Bukestad especially, he's 6 foot 3. He does have a 5 year ETA. Zykov only has a 4. Um, but I know Jan Mizek is a top 6 as well. So we got options there for the 4th round ish. And then Mills, we have to pick up. Two way forward. Yeah, he does have a five year ETA, but still, just gonna fit our system quite nicely. Um, it said he was overload, so that's too bad, but uh, still gonna be. It used to say he's overload, now it says behind the net. Doesn't make a big difference to me. Um, it is going to in the long run with our lineup, but still, I think he's a good player. Um, O'Donnell here is going to fit really well too, he's played an overload um, and again a grinder so he would probably fit the bottom line best. And we got another elite in Novikov but Bednar is also a 6-5 starter. Uh, he's got crash the net actually. Ooh. Okay so he could fit into our third line center position. There's just there's too many good prospects here. To just draft one but we're, that's what we're gonna have to do it sucks but that's the way it's gonna go is that we're gonna miss out on a lot of good prospects here so yeah that's kind of what you guys should be expecting at the start of next episode is that we're gonna have a lot of good players that we could draft but we're not gonna land all of them so guys that's gonna pretty much be it for me just before the video ends I need you to go down below and comment who should we take because we're not going to get Lafreniere, we're most likely not going to get Petrie either. Um, by the looks of it, Ponomarov is going to fit our team well, but he has a three year ETA, which is not, not okay. Um, we need an NHL ready player, so that's why I'm more tempted to take uh, Neil Kainen here. And yeah, the only problem there is loyalty. Potentially the problem with the rest of these guys is that they don't They're all behind the net players for the most part um, They don't fit our system as well as some other guys would um, like again Lundell is a maybe but Again, we have the third pick guys like we aren't even gonna be down in this 910 range We're most likely gonna be picking one of these two guys. So Yeah Ponomarov is six foot one, so that's a nice height. But I don't know what we do with that that top pick. That messes me up because I was kind of expecting to get like Lafreniere or somebody like that. But uh, yeah, that's that's the way it's gonna go next episode. Make sure you go down below and comment who we should uh, be picking or drafting here. And. Um, I mean, overall for first season, it really did not go that badly. We ended up pretty much exactly where we wanted to. We're going to have like the first pick of the second through seventh round. So that's a positive as far as draft to glory goes. As far as actually performing in the NHL, we're not doing so well, but that's expected. So anyways, that's going to wrap it up. I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. We're just kicking it off, just getting started. And... That is going to be it for me. This is Etanios signing out, and see ya! Invincible. Yeah.